Today I have for you 10 twists on Taco Tuesday. I promise you some amazing, delicious recipes and things that are different than you've had before. I was super psyched when my Good Chop order arrived because I really wanted to make some chicken bacon ranch quesadillas. And I happen to be out of chicken in my freezer at this time. I do love that Good Chop arrives frozen so I can actually pop it right in the freezer where I do like to keep my meats as temporary food storage. And you may notice for me that I often buy the um, higher quality chickens when I can because I think it really does matter when it comes to poultry in particular, but even the other meats, I feel like you can really tell. So some important things to know about Good Chop. You can make fully customizable boxes. So you can choose chicken, beef, seafood, or pork products, whatever you like the most. They have 60 plus high quality cuts. They have 100% grass fed ribeyes. They also have well marbled Angus USDA choice or prime cuts if that's what you prefer. They've got sustainable wild caught seafood, salmon, Pacific cod, scallops, shrimp, or something else. And they also have bacon, ground pork, organic drumsticks, just to name a few. And all these products are sourced from the USA. So unlike many other companies, Good Chop sources its meat exclusively from US American farms and fisheries. Good Chop especially prides itself on sourcing beef that comes with no antibiotics or added hormones ever, no artificial ingredients, just only the good stuff. And they have a 100% money back guarantee, but that doesn't even matter because everything I have ever received has been absolutely delicious. So today I am making these delicious chicken bacon ranch quesadillas, and we're just starting by seasoning our chicken. I've got salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, smoked paprika, and some chili powder. And this is what I call the uh, TikTok seasoning blend. It's like, I feel like every time you see a recipe on TikTok or maybe even just like reels, any of the vertical video, you're gonna end up seeing this seasoning and there's a good reason for it because it's absolutely fantastic. Now I'm gonna take you back in time here a little bit. I actually already did cook up some bacon. So I just sliced up some bacon into some smaller pieces. You can cook yours and then chop it after however you wanna do it. Cooked it until crispy. Definitely gonna need that in a chicken bacon and ranch quesadilla and then I diced up some peppers and onion you can use whatever you have if you don't have this you can just add a little bit more onion powder and um, you know some people don't like peppers anyway so who needs them and then I just threw the peppers and onions in the pan with some of that bacon grease just use the same pan I tried to go like one pot this whole time and it actually worked out really well so that was totally fine saute these for like five minutes until they were soft once they were done, I just put a little bit of oil in that pan and I had been seasoning that chicken like we were doing earlier and over medium heat, just sauteing the chicken up, just crisping it on each side and cooking it until it is fully cooked through. I believe that is an internal temperature of 165 degrees. This pan seared chicken like this is absolutely juicy and delicious. That's another really nice thing about these good chopped chicken breasts is that they are just so delightful as in like they don't have any i don't know like gristle or fat or anything on them they are just juicy all the way through so i did decide to air fry these quesadillas you can cook these again even on that same pan that you cook the chicken if you'd like i'm sure that'd be kind of almost like a burrito type thing probably delicious but i kind of wanted to stay away from adding kind of more fat to them and when you cook them in the air fryer it is so insanely fast so you just put some cheese on the bottom. I have some cheddar jack. I love like a Colby Jack cheese on a quesadilla, but regular cheddar is absolutely fine too. Mozzarella is good in it too. So whatever you have on hand, go ahead and use that. Then we're gonna put our chicken in here, top it with a bacon. If you have good chopped bacon, even better. And if you don't have that, you can always just use the Walmart um, or like the Costco bacon bits. Those are fine too. Next, you want to layer on the peppers and onions and then put a drizzle of ranch dressing, whatever your favorite is. I think I honestly just have like the Aldi brand and I find that that is absolutely delicious. I'm not a ranch snob, but if you are, it's totally fine too. Sprinkle on a little more cheese for good measure. Fold these over and then put in the air fryer at, eight, at 400 degrees. Yeah, 800 degrees. That would be high. 400 degrees for four to five minutes. Like it's so fast and they crisp right up it's amazing slice them in half you're gonna get that satisfying crunch you can serve these with whatever you like i just like mine plain because they have so much flavor already but my kids enjoy them with sour cream they are a family hit and they're just really incredible 
So I have great news. So you can get your own delicious chicken, beef, or pork. Good Chop is giving my viewers a deal. Go to goodchop.com slash YouTube and use code Maria120 or click the link in the caption below to get $120 off across your first four boxes today. Go to goodchop.com slash YouTube and use code Maria120 or click the link in the caption below to get $120 off across your first four boxes today. Okay, for this one, we are making a viral quesadilla taco, and these were absolutely amazing. Tommy said they were his favorite best tacos he's ever had, and he always wants to eat Excuse them me? like this from now on, so I was super happy about that. But basically, we're just gonna put cheese in between two taco shells and cook a regular taco. Now, I did make steak tacos, so I'm gonna share the marinade recipe with you. That's not necessarily a viral recipe, but maybe it should be because it was absolutely delicious. For this marinade, you just wanna add a half a cup of oil whatever you had i happen to use olive oil and i'm just going to use a ziploc bag i love to marinate meat in a ziploc bag like this i feel like it's so easy to just put in the fridge and it gets really well covered but you can always use like a tupperware container or a shallow bowl that will work too then you want the juice of one orange two tablespoons of lime juice you can use fresh if you had it i just had the squeeze stuff and that turned out great you want about a half a packet of taco seasoning two teaspoons of cumin and a quarter cup of chopped cilantro that cilantro gives this a ton of flavor cilantro is super inexpensive this is a really easy marinade just with stuff that you have around the house i was lucky i did have an orange i think you'd probably switch out for like different citruses if that's what you have on hand now, I personally was marinating steak because I was able to grab these strip steaks on sale one week, threw them in my freezer, and this was the perfect opportunity to use them. And I knew that even though I was making a lot more steak than I needed for just these tacos, that I could use them for lunches later in the week. You could also do this marinade with chicken. I think that would taste absolutely delicious. You want to marinate these for a few hours in the refrigerator or overnight. I just did mine the morning of, and then when it was time for dinner, I took everything out and we were ready to go. So I just baked mine at 400 degrees for about 15 minutes, and that's kind of up to you, you know, how long you want to cook those for or how you like your steak. I like mine kind of a medium, medium rare, and mine turned out a good medium. So it was comfortable with how it, how it cooked, especially because I was going to put it in a taco. Now for the quesadilla tacos, you wanna melt about two tablespoons of butter. You can use oil too if you have it, but I prefer butter personally when I'm making a quesadilla over a medium low heat. Then place, I use just like smaller tortillas. These are just like regular, maybe like fajita size. Um, I think you could definitely do something bigger, but it would turn out more like a burrito or you could use like smaller corn tacos um, and that would work too. So whatever way you wanna do it, it's gonna be fine. You just wanna place those right into the butter and then top them with some cheddar cheese. So just use shredded cheddar cheese on these and then place another tortilla right over the top of that and let it melt and then once it's kind of melty and the side of your tortilla is crispy you want to flip it over and that's pretty much it that's going to give you your quesadilla tortilla shell i mean it really ups the game here it's absolutely delicious and like why didn't we think of this sooner this is almost like the stuffed crust pizza of tacos like how, how have I not been doing this my whole life? It's, it's so delicious. The kids were obsessed and it's probably going to be a staple in our house moving forward. You can put whatever your favorite fixins are on your taco. So just started off right off with steak. I did some shredded lettuce, to, uh, salsa, sour cream, shredded cheese, all of my favorite fixings and it was fabulous. What did you say about it though? You said it was. It's great. The best taco you've ever had? Mm -hmm. Oh boy, we have to make these from now on. Oh, oh Betty! Betty! We'll have to make these from now on, huh? Mm -hmm. Next up, we have vegetarian Southwest tacos. Yes, I served these with Dominican rice and beans that were in my pantry video the other day. I'll make sure to put the link in the description box for you if you haven't seen it because you do not want to miss that rice and beans recipe. You want to start off with one package of Hungry Jack au gratin or scalloped potatoes, but I'm sure you could just use a store brand too. I just find that the Hungry Jack stuff is at Dollar Tree and it's really easy to find and very inexpensive. So using something like this is a great way to use something that is shelf stable, pantry friendly, and really make something amazing out of it. You actually just want to follow the instructions on the back of the package. You're mixing hot water, sauce mix, uh, margarine or butter and milk and you can get all of those things at Dollar Tree. Put that in a nine by nine pan, mix everything together and bake at 450 degrees for about 20 minutes. 
The recipe calls for peppers and onions and I just grabbed one of those seasoning packets from the freezer section at my Dollar Tree and just cooked that up in a pan with some oil so that everything was well cooked. If you're using fresh, the recipe just says use a half a cup of diced onion and one cup of diced bell pepper. And you just wanna add that right into your nine by nine once it comes out 20 minutes later. Then I'm adding one drained and rinsed can of black beans, one can of, it says Southwestern diced tomatoes. It does not say drained, but I'm used to using like the Rotel brand of green chili tomatoes and a half a teaspoon of cumin with one teaspoon of chili powder. And then I just mixed in all that pepper and onion seasoning mix and that was so delicious. Because I cooked that up while those uh, potatoes were kind of par cooking, the onions almost got like caramelized and the flavor was amazing. If you don't have either of those things, a little sprinkle of onion powder will do just fine. You wanna place this back in the oven for another 20 minutes until the potatoes are tender and golden brown. In the meantime, I'm just gonna cook up some corn tortillas. You can also use the flour tortillas. You can even use the crunchy taco shells if you'd like. Anything would taste good with this. This is such a resourceful meal because of that cheese mixture that's already in with those potatoes. You get so much flavor and it's so creamy and kind of like nothing I've ever had before, but I was kind of obsessed with it. It also makes a ton of food. We had so many leftovers. I also think you could serve this like over rice or even as a side with something else. This is what everything looks like without any toppings or anything you don't even need toppings i did add some sour cream and cilantro to mine when the time was right because i had it but it doesn't need it and for leftovers i ended up doing two things with mine because i had so much i ended up making a breakfast burrito with some eggs and it was fabulous and i also ended up making some like crunchy tacos in the oven and broiling them so that they got crispy on the outside I wish I got footage of that, but that was so, so good. Next up, we have a taco zucchini boats. This is a great way to use zucchini and also a really healthy alternative to your traditional taco. You're gonna need four to five medium size zucchinis. Now I would say this is about two pounds of zucchini. And when I'm looking for zucchini on sale, I wanna find it between 99 cents and $1.29 a pound. Anything more than that, you really don't wanna pay. So we're gonna wait wait until everything is on sale. So if you see zucchini on sale, that might be a good time to make these taco zucchini boats. Now, if you're not on a budget, go ahead, make them anytime you want. But I'm just saying budget friendly, you wanna get them for like 99 cents to $1.29 a pound. And then you wanna cut them in half and then you're gonna hollow out the center of them. Now you could go ahead and use the center and put the, set that aside and use that for something else. You could make zucchini bread out of it. You could put it into some sort of like veggie scramble, make like a the tui or you can make a vegetable stock so any pieces of the vegetable you see how i cut the top of the zucchini off you could also set that aside keep those in bags and then make vegetable stock and that's a great way to you know save money and make a stock for soups and other things so you want to hollow those out to about a quarter of an inch thick once all of your zucchini is hollowed out place them on a baking sheet and then drizzle some olive oil over the top you can use regular vegetable oil, that would be fine too, whatever you have, and then a little sprinkle of salt. And you wanna chop up one onion. The recipe calls for three quarters a cup of chopped onion. I think one onion is just about right in this case. It's about a medium size. Onions are something that I love to keep on hand. Buy a whole bag when they're on sale and they make everything taste better and more vibrant. And they're a very budget friendly option to add to any meal that you're making. Now, if you wanna go even more budget friendly, you can always just swap out for onion powder if you're really, really on the cheap. But I feel like onions are something you should keep in your pantry and you should always have it on hand because they are so inexpensive and they do add so much value to so many meals. Now I'm just mincing up about three tablespoons of fresh cilantro. Cilantro is another very budget friendly herb. It comes for about 99 cents most of the time and it goes with almost everything. It adds a pop of flavor, but I also know that some people do not love cilantro. I heard it tastes like soap to many people. So it's like a love it or hate it thing. If you don't love it, don't put it in. If you do love it, then I would recommend keeping cilantro on hand every week because you can add it to all of your different Mexican inspired dishes, which are usually less expensive. While cutting and getting our meat ready, you wanna put those zucchini boats in the oven at 400 degrees for 18 to 22 minutes until tender. So we're actually gonna cook the zucchini boats before we put the filling in. And now I'm just gonna saute up this onion for about two minutes over medium high heat. Next, I'm gonna add in ground turkey. So I have about, I think I have a little over a pound of ground turkey. The recipe does actually just call for a pound, but you know you can get those like 20.6 ounce containers. 
So I did add all of it in this case. Now you can use ground beef if you have that, or you could take this whole container of ground turkey and slit, put it in half basically. So use like three quarters of a pound or grab one of those tubes of ground turkey you can get at Walmart. I think it used to be $1.67. I haven't been there in a while, so I don't know how much that's changed, but you could use one of those. You could cut one of those in half. And so what you can do is you can take about half the meat and sub it out for more beans. We're gonna put beans in in just a moment. And so I'm just adding in all my spices at this point once my meat is cooked up. I have um, some salt, pepper, a tablespoon of chili powder, a half a teaspoon of chili powder, a teaspoon of ground cumin, and then I'm putting in a half a cup of tomato sauce as well as a half a cup of chicken broth and I'm using my chicken bouillon here. And I have my can of drained black beans. And this is where if you're using less meat, go ahead and put like two cans of black beans in. As well as two teaspoons of minced garlic. Now, again, minced, like garlic is so cheap. It's a great thing to keep on hand, just like onions, because it's so inexpensive and it adds a lot of flavor to your meals. But if you don't have it, you can use just regular garlic powder and that can save you some money too. So I feel like with this meal, you can really get away with doing, you know, say it's two pounds of zucchini, that's $2, maybe three, and then use like a three quarter of a pound or a half a pound. Let's go down to the bare bones and say you're using half of one of those rolls from Walmart and that's gonna be like 80 cents. So let's bump it up to a dollar. So you're looking at, $3 total there, and then two cans of black beans at 50 cents each, $4, and you've got your spices. Hopefully you already have those on hand. A small can of tomato sauce can be 40 cents, so you're looking at $4.40, and you can get cheese at the dollar three for $1.25, so that's $5.65 maybe for this meal add cilantro six dollars and 65 cents so you can see how it goes up you just saw there i was actually taking some lime juice and squeezing that on top as well as putting my minced cilantro over top and then followed by some shredded cheese and you just want to put those in the oven for about five minutes longer and that will give you this delicious zucchini boats. They are so awesome and such a healthy alternative to tacos and just something different. You know, sometimes you like tacos are amazing. We love them in our family, but I also like to do different things with the same type of stuff that would be in the tacos. You can see my husband here serving up our children. I think I was up feeding the baby at this time, but luckily everything was all set and ready to go. For this one, we are making a more traditional taco. We're just using the stand and stuff kit, but I'm gonna use refried beans with my ground beef to kind of stretch out that ground beef. This is a great way to save money on tacos and really keep your family full. Refried beans are super cheap and super delicious. We're also gonna make up a really quick and easy Spanish rice to go with it. In a medium saucepan over medium heat, add either one tablespoon of butter and one tablespoon of oil or two tablespoons of oil or two tablespoons of butter or you know whatever combination of that that you want. And then you wanna add your rice and stir to coat with that oil or butter and cook stirring frequently for about two minutes until that rice is nice and toasty. And then add in one and a half cups of water or chicken broth or bone broth or whatever you have. If you're just using water, just add a little bit of salt to that. I am actually gonna use chicken bouillon because I have that on hand. So I'm using three half tablespoons to add to my cup and a half of water. Then you wanna add about a cup of tomato sauce and stir. Add a half a teaspoon of cumin, a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a teaspoon of chili powder and stir. And then you're going to increase your heat to high and bring to a boil. And then you wanna reduce your heat to low and place a lid on the pot and cook for about 20 minutes. So as you can see, that's such a simple recipe with things that you may already have on hand and can be such an inexpensive elevation to what would normally be just a plain taco dinner. For my tacos, I'm just using a half a pound of ground beef and add in my refried beans. Then you just wanna follow the package instructions on the taco seasoning by adding a little bit of water and that seasoning and letting it simmer for a few minutes and you're gonna have a delicious taco filling that you only had to use a half a pound of ground beef for. So maybe this is a tip you've heard many times, maybe it's a brand new one, but I had to share. I just followed the instructions on the package for the taco shells. I put some taco sauce in that bowl because it comes with the kit and I shredded up about half of my cheddar cheese. 
and sometimes you get a little distracted as a parent and you let your rice go a little bit too long. This still tasted amazing and it was such a nice way to use so few ingredients, but I did overcook it just a little bit. It was stuck to the bottom of the pan, but it was such a great addition to our taco meal and I hope that you try it. Next up, we're gonna make a simple grilled stuffed burrito with ground beef. This is absolutely awesome. You're just gonna want some large flour tortillas, some ground beef, or you could use like ground chicken or turkey. I had quite a bit of it, so I ended up actually making some burrito bowls afterwards. Then I have some Spanish rice aroni, some cheddar cheese, sour cream, and taco seasonings. To start by making the Spanish rice aroni just according to the package instructions and you could actually always use the Spanish rice that I made in the recipe prior to this that's a good option to use in a burrito as well and then you're just gonna make your ground beef like you would make any tacos I'm just using regular taco seasoning following the instructions on the back of the package you can make your own taco seasoning if that's what you like to do and then to assemble the burritos although it's it is ideal to have the extra large tortillas. If you don't, that's gonna be okay. You're just gonna make them a little bit smaller. I just start with some shredded cheese. I had shredded cheddar, some ground beef, and the rice. And if you wanted to, you could even actually add like sour cream and salsa right into these. Family actually complained at me after and was like, at Chipotle, they just put everything in. And I realized that that is true. So you can totally do it like that. I like to put a little bit of oil or butter in the bottom of a pan over medium heat and then grill them up. And this is kind of like that Taco Bell style of like a grilled stuffed burrito. It's absolutely fantastic. Ben had gotten hungry, so I just gave him almost like a little burrito bowl without the tortilla. And he still thought that was absolutely wonderful. So yeah, these are a absolutely delicious burrito that you can make so simply like just three four ingredients really you know you can put whatever fixings you like with them and they're just fabulous we're gonna get started with chicken wonton tacos these are reminiscent of something you may have seen at applebee's at some point but they're much healthier you want to shred peel grate four small carrots and then slice up about a third ahead of red cabbage Place those in a medium to large bowl and then mix with a quarter cup of coleslaw dressing, a quarter cup of red wine vinegar, two tablespoons of soy sauce. And if you have it, use two tablespoons of teriyaki sauce. I didn't, so I just added a little drizzle of honey and then mixed everything well. Then you wanna refrigerate this for at least an hour or overnight. Once your slaw is ready, you wanna add two tablespoons of sesame oil in a pan over medium high heat, and then add one pound of ground chicken and cook until it's brown about five to seven minutes until crumbly. Drain off any excess fat and add a quarter cup of stir fry sauce, cover the skillet and reduce your heat to low and simmer. I actually made my own stir fry sauce because I didn't have any on hand and I will put that recipe down in the description box for you. To make your wonton tacos, you wanna form wonton wrappers into taco shapes and arrange them on cups inverted in a muffin tin. So you basically turn your muffin tin upside down and then put your wrappers in there and it's gonna set them up like little tacos. And it's so nice to just buy those pre-made wonton wrappers. You don't have to do anything crazy and it makes it super easy. You wanna bake this at 350 degrees until firm and lightly brown. That's about seven minutes, but just check them. If you need to cook them longer, then go ahead and do that. And then you wanna add two to three tablespoons of your chicken mixture to each wonton shell and top it with that slaw. And these are so beautiful, so crowd pleasing, and they're relatively easy because you're making all of those little taco wonton things at the same time. And you're just cooking up your meat really quickly. And it is super easy to make that slaw ahead of time. So they are super simple to assemble. And I'm telling you, they're gonna wow everyone. We're gonna be making some chicken taquito casserole or you can use any type of taquitos. So I'm using chicken because that's what we like, but I got them at Walmart for under five bucks and you're gonna make a ton of food with this. I'm just using one serving of white rice. You can use as much as you like, make a bunch for your family, but this is great because you're using those $5 taquitos. There's 16 in a package, so you're gonna get tons. And then to our white rice, we're just gonna add in one drained can of black beans, a drained can of corn, one can of cheddar cheese soup, a packet of taco seasoning, and then a little bit of salsa if you like. You could also add in some uh, enchilada sauce if you wanna do that instead of the cheese soup, but we're just gonna do cheese soup and taco seasoning and a little bit of salsa. And then you wanna play that inside of your casserole dish and top it with the taquitos. And we're gonna bake this at 375 degrees for about 
35 minutes. And that should cook up your whole taquitos and everything. It's gonna be nice and warm. And then we're just gonna cover that with cheese. And you can use whatever toppings you like. So we're gonna put it back in the oven for five, 10 minutes until that cheese is melty and bubbly. Then I'm gonna top mine with scallions and some diced tomatoes. You can use like a pico de gallo. You can use like whatever salsa that you like. We're gonna serve ours with sour cream. You can do guacamole, hot sauce, anything. The options are endless. And this one is so good. It's gonna stretch so far for so little money. These are absolutely divine. You would never know that you use just like the cheap frozen Walmart taquitos with this. I give it a five out of five. Love it. Next up, we're gonna make some steak fajitas and there's just like nothing like using a seasoning packet to make things super easy on yourself. You want one envelope of that Lipton onion soup mix, a quarter cup of your favorite oil, whatever you have on hand, one quarter cup of water, and a quarter cup of lime juice. I happen to have a fresh lime on hand, so I'm just gonna squeeze in both halves of that. Or you could use just lime juice from the store or even from the Dollar Tree and just squirt that into a quarter cup and that will be perfect. Then you want about a teaspoon of lime zest if you have it. If you're using just like the lime juice, add another teaspoon and that should be fine. You can chop or grate in two cloves of fresh garlic or do a couple of teaspoons of garlic powder. Add a half a teaspoon of dried oregano, followed by a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. And then you can mix this well. And to this, you're gonna add about a pound or two of beef flank steak. Now, I also think that you could very easily use this marinade with a much cheaper cut of meat, such as a London broil, or you could even do chicken breasts and all that would taste so good in a fajita. Then you just wanna cover this and refrigerate it for at least four hours or overnight. Now, I personally love onions and peppers with my fajitas, but you don't have to have them. You could just have more of like a taco style where you do just sour cream and cheese, maybe a little lettuce, but I think that peppers and onions are absolutely delicious. So I'm just slicing mine thinly, and then I'm gonna saute them over a medium low heat with some oil for, you know, up to 20 minutes. I like mine really cooked down, but you can cook them so they're a little bit crispier. This is kind of your choice and how you like them, but I love to make my onions kind of more caramelized. So if you cook them at that low temperature like that, they really will kind of break down and all of the natural sugars will come out and they just taste phenomenal. I'm also gonna make up a super simple fresh guacamole to go with my fajitas today. You don't have to do this. You could also buy some either on sale. Sometimes you can find that on clearance and freeze it and take that out of the freezer. You're gonna be good to go. Or you can just do chunks of guava avocado, but it's gonna be very easy to make this guacamole. So I figured I'd show you guys. For two avocados, you just wanna grate in like probably a little less than a quarter cup of onion. Alternatively, you could very easily use onion powder, just about a teaspoon. To that, add a half a teaspoon of salt, followed by a squeeze of a wedge of lime. Mash everything together and it's gonna be that simple. You can just take a fork to it, or if you have like a hand blender, go ahead and use that, however you like to do it. I just like a little fork for mine, just to keep chunks in there. And this is the easiest way to do it. It's super simple. There's not like a lot going on, but it's perfect for a fajita. You wanna grill your marinated meat over high heat until it reaches the desired doneness. So for medium rare, the thermometer should read 135 degrees, for medium, 140, and for medium well, 145. We're more of a medium rare family, so ours is about 135 degrees. And then you just wanna slice this thinly along the grain, or against the grain, sorry, not along the grain, against the grain. My husband was slicing some pieces. I was like, those are too thick. So I ended up taking over the process and slicing them a lot thinner because for a fajita, you really do want like a thin sliced steak. You can see how delicious that turned out right there. We have our cooked down onions and peppers, some guacamole. I served it with some salsa, some sour cream, and just some regular tortillas, shredded cheese, all of the fixings. Whatever you like on your fajitas, go ahead and got eat it, and it's going to be can awesome. I have some separate meat also. Yeah, what you got there in your plate? No. What is it? A black raspberry. Next up, we're making P.F. Chang's lettuce wraps. Now there are a million of these recipes out there on the internet, and maybe you have your own favorite, but I happen to like this one from Stylish Cravings. You wanna start off by dicing about a half a cup of onion. You know me, if I have a whole onion, I'm gonna go for it. If I have a half, I'll do a half. 
Another option is always to add in a teaspoon or two of onion powder when you're cooking. Now the recipe calls for two pounds of ground beef, pork, or chicken, whatever you have in your freezer, whatever you find on sale. And I only had one pound of ground beef today, but I did have a bunch of mushrooms. And I thought, you know, mushrooms are earthy enough, they're meaty enough, that I'm actually gonna slice up my entire container of mushrooms and use those as a supplement for that other pound of ground beef. You wanna slice up about a quarter cup of water chestnuts. Now, water chestnuts are pretty inexpensive. They come in, I think, at 99 cents at my local store. So they're a great thing to just stock up on, grab a few cans of, and keep around in your pantry. And that way they go really, really well with any sort of Asian dish that you're cooking and it'll add a little extra crunch. Now, before I get started on cooking everything, I'm gonna get started with my sauce. You want about a teaspoon of minced garlic. So I'm just actually going to grate mine or kind of microplane it, or you could use already minced garlic or you could use garlic powder just a teaspoon will do to that add two tablespoons of soy sauce or in my case i'm using coconut aminos you can grate in about a half a teaspoon of frozen or fresh ginger or you could use a half a teaspoon of ginger paste another good option here if you don't have any of those things is ginger powder or ground ginger i've used that many many times in place of fresh ginger and it still tastes really good but I am proud of myself because I finally grabbed some ginger, placed it in the freezer, and then I can just grate off some whenever I need it. You also wanna add a half a tablespoon of rice wine vinegar. And this completes your sauce. Just give it a stir and we'll get started cooking everything on the stove. You wanna heat your skillet over medium high heat and then add in one tablespoon of oil and a half a tablespoon of sesame oil. Add your onions to the skillet and then saute for three to five minutes until they begin to soften. I recommend serving a side with this. So you could do some rice or I happen to find these pork dumplings and these beef dumplings on manager special. So I made those up on the side. There's also really, really good egg rolls or spring rolls at the Dollar Tree. You can get eight of them in a little package for $1.25 and they are so delicious and they go so good with something like this. Once your onions are softened, add in either your two pounds of ground meat, that's ground pork, beef, or chicken. I'm using ground beef. And if you're using mushrooms like I am, you can just break up your meat a little bit and then go ahead and add those mushrooms in as well to cook right alongside the meat. You just wanna cook this all together until your ground meat is fully browned. And then add in one third a cup of hoisin sauce and mix that well. You also wanna add in the rest of the other sauce that you made. And once everything is well combined there, you just wanna add in those water chestnuts and then we're gonna cook that for about three to five minutes just to make sure that all those flavors meld and get into all of the meat and the mushrooms and the water chestnuts. And this is going to be done. It's gonna be ready to serve. You just wanna serve this filling inside bib or butter lettuce. You can see I have my dumplings here on the side. They cooked up so well. I'm gonna top it with a little bit of cut up scallions if you like. My kids were like not gonna go for the lettuce, so I actually served it with tortillas for them and they absolutely loved it. An order of lettuce wraps is going for about $8.95 these days at P.F. Chang's. And I would guess that this is about four to six times the amount that you're gonna get at P.F. Chang's and I'm feeding my entire family for around probably less than $10. So you're definitely getting a lot of bang for your buck with this meal and you're eating relatively healthy too when you use the lettuce wraps. Do not forget to get your deal on Good Chop. Go to goodchop.com slash YouTube and use code Maria120 or click the link in the caption below to get $120 off across your first four boxes today. I wanna thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and click on this next video for some more inspiration and remember the next time you're on YouTube, make sure you're watching Meals with Maria.